שבת שלום לכולם, שבת שלום בית מלך משפחה. We want to wish you a Messiah filled Shabbat of peace as we go live again for our Kabbalat Shabbat Yeshiva here at Beit Melech while we're under lockdown uh, at the moment here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And I'm excited tonight because as well as having Beit Ania, uh, Bethany, my daughter with me, to sing some beautiful backing vocals to make uh, the music sound good. I've also got two of my other daughters, Aliyah and Lilith, Kenzie and Lilia. You can see Kenzie there on the couch in the background, giving the victory symbol. At least I hope that's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are, of course, missing our oldest girl, Azaria, in Canada. So we want to do a shout out to you, Bad Shelley. So we're going to get started. Uh, we want to welcome those who are watching. Hinera, Shabbat Shalom, Achote, Shabbat Shalom, Moti. Good to see you, dear. Shabbat Shalom, Aliyahu, Hinasi, and the family. Great to have you with us again. And uh, we're going to get started now with Shema. Shema Oh, oh, oh. 
Blessed be the name of his King Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Adonai HaAdonai, Melech HaMelechim, forever, Le'olam Vayid. Shabbat Shalom, Lien, I saw you there, Lien White. Shabbat Shalom, Ryan Freed. Achei, Ohev Otcha, Ohev Otcha Hamon. Shabbat Shalom, Shannon Heke. Good to have you joining us too, Shannon and the Heke family. Uh, we're going to sing one that's pretty familiar with our community. Atad Unai. Atad Unai, Magin Badi, Kivodi Umerim, Oshi. Sadonai magin badi kivodi umeri oshi Adonai Yeshua ti Adonai chaim shene Ani ohel otcha tole atza magin badi. Adonai magin badi kivodi umeri oshi. Adonai magin badi kivodi umeri oshi. Adonai Yeshua ti Adonai chai shene.
So he truly is a shield coming over our head, constantly protecting us. Tadunai, Magain, Baadi. Shabbat Shalom, Gemma Horn. Lovely to have you join us. Shabbat Shalom, Lynette. It's good to see you online with us. And Shabbat Shalom to Wolven. Uh, good to see you, my brother. Shalom Ache, Ohevotcha. Okay, we're going to finish up with a song that reminds us of what's possible through the King Messiah Yeshua between brothers and sisters. not a worship song that one's the tuning song he named my dog Shabbat Shalom Teresa. Saw you there. Shabbat Shalom to Jaco. 
Um, great to see you, brother. Shabbat shalom lecha. Um, Shabbat shalom to Joe and to Mark Tuta and Joe. Uh, good to see you guys joining us. And also Glenn Hutana in Australia. Shabbat shalom, Achi. Shabbat shalom, brother. We miss you. We, we love you. Good to have you joining us here on our live stream tonight. Okay, so uh, Bethany's job is done. Toda rabba. Toda rabba. Bat shele. Okay, and I'm going to welcome our uh, guests for tonight. And uh, they're not really guests, they're part of the family, but uh, they're guests to the live stream. <coughs> and uh, rather than do our usual yeshiva Bible study tonight, we're going to take a break from that because we had planned for Alia and Lilith to come and share with our community uh, a project that they're working on together which is I think really exciting and a great way to communicate the gospel of our King Messiah Yeshua so I thought it'd be great for our community to know about that and to hear from them directly and because we're not meeting in person the live stream is the appropriate place to do that so welcome girls Kinti if you just want to move your chair forward so people can see you awesome a little bit more Yala, baby, yala, yala, yala. I'm here. Okay, so um, so you will have heard me call them by different names. So Lilia, whose Hebrew name is Lilith, and Kenzie, whose middle name and Hebrew name is Alia. So I use both names interchangeably. So if I do that tonight, um, don't get confused. There aren't two other people in the room. Uh, I am speaking about our two girls, and um, maybe do you guys want to say hello to everybody out there on the intraweb? Uh, shalom. Shalom. Hello. <laughs> shalom, and Frank's watching. Shalom, Frank. Shabbat shalom. Um, and Glenn tells me I need to get on the bus, bro. So uh, that's he's uh, <laughs> he's supporting the girls, making sure I don't harass them too much. So, it's my privilege to introduce these two young ladies, and we're going to change our screens so that um, we can see some of the work that they're doing. So, we're going to give you an opportunity to see some slides that they're going to take us through, and I'm not going to talk any more about what they're doing. I'm going to give it over to them, and I'll get them to share with you what this project is all about, what's behind it. And while you're listening, if you have some questions, you're welcome to type those into the live feed. I'm watching that live feed, and I'll take note of your questions, and I'll ask the girls those questions at the end of their presentation. After we've looked at a couple of pre-animations they've done, kind of storyboard animations for the up and coming project. So write your questions into the feed. I will take those down and I'll ask the girls at the end of their presentation. So Lilith, Alia, over to you. Cool. Um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, this thingy that's up is a concept drawing that we did for our animated film that we want to produce called Haderic, which is the way in English. Great. Um, so we're planning to build a studio together, which we've called AALT or Alev Tub. Um, both of us are students at at an animation college. Uh, I'm doing a bachelor's and Kenzie is doing a diploma. Uh, I'll be finishing this year and Kenzie will be finishing next year. Um, what Aleph Tav stands for, it's the beginning and the end of the Aleph Beit, which is the Hebrew alphabet. Um, the first A being Ayin. Is it Ayin? Yeah. No, Aleph. 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 Oh. <laughs> 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 I'll redo. Aleph, Aleph I'll, and Tav. I'll redo. It's yeah. live, so never yeah. mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just say that. It's yeah. okay. The, the second one is Ayan. The Ayan. second one is Ayan, which is the first letter of Alia. Uh, and the L is the Lamed, which stands for Lilit. And we're in the middle of the beginning and the end. Awesome. Mm. Um, yeah, that's our studio name. Uh 
yeah we made um i mean we decided to make a studio after we started the uh animation hadidic and like because you know we made the idea of the movie and then we're like oh maybe we should make something that can make more than just one movie and so we decided to make Aleph Tal as a Christian um, animation production studio. Awesome. Yeah. And at the moment it's just us two, but like we're in our first, this is our first project. Yeah. But other than that, we've also started a another project under the name of Aleph Talks, which is a podcast that we started because we wanted to talk about some stuff that has to do with Christian stuff from our age point of view to help other people our age who don't know about Christianity and who also have struggled with stuff that we struggled with just like for for no reason yeah great yeah just for fun yeah hopefully like people who've listened um it's helped them in their spiritual journey with Jesus that's fantastic I've listened to your podcast a number of times and I think you guys do a fantastic job and so I would encourage other people to listen and um, we can maybe put up links to your podcast (laughs) at the end but um, I just want to encourage you and say I think you do a great job thanks a lot mate we learnt from some random dude and then um so the concept of our film is basically the journey of someone's life it follows someone our main character eve williams and her journey as a christian and how she falls uh somewhat away from god at the time Mm. and we have a our main idea is showing off the spiritual and physical world as two different places uh that happen at the same time so what's happening in the physical world is reflected in the spiritual world and how her journey with God is going yeah and um, so in the beginning of our f- like we start the film with her growing up obviously and when she's younger the, in the spiritual world which is represented as a hedge it's uh, overflowing with like vibrant colors like the childlike happy colors if you know like about color theory you'll like kind of understand what we're talking about and um it's got heaps of like flowers or whatever and then as she drifts in her mindset away from god um the flowers start to wilt and the colors um aren't as vibrant anymore and so that coincides with the physical world where she's facing temptations and those temptations in the spiritual world are hedge openings and like when she when it fully goes to like um her sadness and stuff she goes into she goes into a hedge opening which is represented by like super plastic colors which we'll be able to, sh- we'll, we hope to be able to show in our animation. And that uh, represents the fake happiness of the temptation she's walked into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is our character Eve. Um, on the right, the colored one is the, <laughs> <laughs> the colored one. Is her is the physical world good call? And the not colored one is the spiritual world concepts. Um, so she we follow her life as as a Christian and how she deals with the things that pop up over time, and we get to see how you know what she does in the physical world, how it's affecting her spiritual life, mm. uh, the different types of temptations she comes up to and how they're dealt with and how she passes them. Yeah, important factors we wanted to show in the animation about her is that she was raised in a Christian home and that she was, um, she is very intelligent, but the way people have treated her has caused her to be 
prideful in the way that she is. And so um, when the film's made, we hope to show those specific aspects because we wanted her to be um, like, we wanted her to be, what do you call it? Like surrounded by Christian stuff her whole life so that it's more, it shows that side of when people lo- like stray from God as well. Mm, that so you're not like uh, free from temptations if you even if you've grown up in a christian house mm. yeah and yeah. household that you're still susceptible to yeah. sin yeah yeah i mean everyone's sinning but like you're still decide you can still decide to continue sinning if you want you know because human stuff that's yeah. great yeah i'm sorry to interrupt no, but i'm actually not sorry but <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, good. i i think it's great that you're doing that um One of the reasons I think it's great is because it's almost counterintuitive with regard to popular evangelical faith journey sort of stuff. Because um, if you've been around evangelical or Protestant Christianity for a long time, what what you find is that it almost becomes a badge of honor for someone to have this great testimony about how terrible their life was and how dirty they were and how wicked they were. And it's almost praised because they've had this terrible life and now they've come to faith. But what I like about what you guys are doing is is you're looking at the other side of that where people are brought up with faith and they, they suffer the same struggles of temptation, albeit differently. But I like that because it gives us a fuller picture of the community of faith rather than just focusing on the negatives of our past. Mm. And so I think it's exciting that you girls who didn't grow up in a believing home have chosen to do it that way. It, it, you know, it, it's in your character. That's your style, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because we understand that as well. Because yes. we've gone to, like, Christian camps and stuff. As, sure. Like, younger. Yeah. When we weren't into... Yeah. when we weren't christian we were like oh yeah this is another sob story kind of stuff sure and like as people who have come up in certain circumstances it's kind of repetitive and yeah. stuff in, in my mind i'd be turned off if it was like a typical it starts to sound disingenuous yeah mm. yeah it's like written scripted yeah, yeah. kind of stuff great i just love that you're doing it this way go ahead sorry um, <laughs> you might be wondering about that bottom part where it talks about like uh, disease kind of thing she's got that cirrhosis I think it is mm. uh, it's it's a big part of our um, our story and it shows often throughout the storyline um, she's sick but she doesn't know that she's sick until later on and we show that um, how that affects her pride and how it how it links to everything that she's been doing Right. Good stuff. That's great. <laughs> oh yeah. So this is just um, our brief like pinpoints of what the whole story is. Uh, I forgot we forgot to mention, but when we animate it, we only have one sentence of dialogue for the whole yeah. short film, which is we hope for it to be twenty to twenty five minutes roughly, and the the short dialogue is just. Um, I'm here for you, which is said when she's born and is echoed when she's uh, in that same part. So it's said by her mum and then it echoes in the spiritual world. And then at the end, it's written on a note in Hebrew. We just wanted to make it like a, a whole circle so that you're drawn back to the beginning and you remember the whole, like, I don't know how to explain it. It like, sounds like Teshuva. It sounds like to return to mm. God. Yeah, well, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's like our concept. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's our whole film <laughs> concept. That's the purpose so of it. I, yeah. yeah, so cool. That's yeah. awesome. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So. Anyways, yeah, so it's like Eve's born, and then she goes to Sunday school, starts learning about God. Uh, and an intermediate, one of her friends who she's grown up with, she starts 
catching feelings for him, I guess. And then <laughs> in high school, <laughs> can tell you're a writer. That, that was poetic, mate. In high school, um, they get together, and then she collapses, which is shown due to her um, overworking herself with study and stuff. And then she makes friends with some bad people in high school, like you know, not bad people, just like typical bad influences. That, are, that you get in high school. And then she, her first uh, temptation that we show explicitly is the sex temptation. And when she's with, she gets influenced by the Delilah character to try to have sex with the Samson character who she's with. And then they break up and then she's like super sad. She goes to a party, then there's the alcohol temptation and then she collapses again and then she graduates high school and then she goes into the pride temptation so the other temptation she looked at she didn't go in she contemplated but the pride one she goes into the the pride one kind of draws her in a little bit more due to her personality because she wants to think that she doesn't need the person she liked that she doesn't need her parents and that she doesn't need anyone else but herself to move forward mm, like she uh she studied re really well she got herself a an esteemed job or whatever she built her own company all the makings of that stuff yeah yeah and as as she goes further on into this uh pride world she kind of gets stuck in there because it's so, it seems so colourful and vibrant, but it's not what it looks like. Mm. Yeah. Uh, kind of holds her there and keeps her there. She starts drifting away from her friends and her family. She doesn't go to church anymore. Until eventually she's just ignoring all her parents' calls and texts. And she finally has one last collapse that actually sends her to hospital. And her pride takes her even further. She won't ask her parents for help or t even tell her parents that she's sick and she kind of just slowly withers away as she refuses help and that's when she sees the note yeah and she's reminded that of god mm. that god was there and at that moment she falls into a cardiac arrest of some sorts and most of the film from there takes place in the spiritual world where mm. she looks back and she sees a part of her wool because we haven't explained what we haven't that explained is. that at the start um eve is knitted together in the spiritual world yeah we'll explain like a bit came more up with that. that yeah there's but, there's some of that that is pretty obvious in one of the short animations that mm, you're yeah. going to show us yeah but we also have verses to qualify oh, wow. what we're doing great <laughs> and what? what do you think we are is okay, okay. Kind of nonsense. Just said it, just said <laughs> but yeah so that um so she's made out of wool and when she had gone into the pride temptation her wool had got stuck on the main path ah. and then when she realizes that she wants to go back and she looks back she sees the wool and she decides to pull herself out which isn't actually her pulling herself out it's god helping her because the path the original path is your journey with god and since it was stuck on the original it was god holding you right can i just clarify so at this later part of of the film when she goes into cardiac arrest she's not dead but what is happening is happening in the spiritual realm so she's not yet dead but yeah. she's experiencing a more a heightened realism as far as spiritual things mm, go yeah yeah great so she's she's not dead yet yeah yeah She's, it, we'll, we'll show in the process okay, how sure. she's still being, uh, how the doctors are trying to save her mm. while she's also trying to escape from this pride room. Great. Yeah, we have a lot of um, transition scenes that I think we planned out very well because she, after she gets escapes the pride room, she starts being chased by an ominous figure, which we haven't uh, explicitly shown. Yeah. Uh, we haven't like drawn it yet, but we haven't just, we've decided not to explicitly show it. Yeah. And, um, it's chasing her through the main hedge, but in the background you can hear it getting stopped by like 
you can hear leaves cracking like it's falling into other parts of the hedge or something. Mm-hmm. Like it can't hold itself up on the main part. Yeah. Wow. And then um, while she's being chased and stuff, like there's a part where she trips, which we animated, and um, that the trip sound ignites a sound in this physical world where like a trolley bangs against the bed where she's having cardiac arrest okay. and so on and so forth. We have a lot of um, transitions like that, which I think cause excitement to the viewer and also show a lot like show that it's coinciding as one world yeah because spiritual and physical are together i love it that great convergent aspect yeah explain Um, it yeah so while she's running she comes to basically this giant chasm uh of nothing she can't you can see the other side but she can't get there the impossible Hmm. and she stops and she has to make the choice whether to stay and let whatever's chasing her take her or to jump in with whatever faith she has left and in the end she chooses to jump and at that point she transitions from being an adult spiritual version back to her child version as she's caught in the arms of god wow and then it it ends there yeah it goes white and um you can hear the beeping like the flat line from the physical world (laughs) That's awesome. So, yeah. Uh, well, I guess we'll explain the, the verses next. Uh, no, it's flowers next. Oh. Well, uh, sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, we also forgot to mention this. Uh, in the paths, we have certain flowers, which mean certain things. Yeah. Um, so, on the main path, the, the path that leads you to God, the straight path, we have daisies. And they can mean innocence, purity, true love, and new beginnings. Uh, We wanted to pick flowers that kind of represented the... Because the path is a hedge. And in the hedge, there's flowers, of course. And so we wanted to show different meanings based on that. Mm -hmm. And in the sex temptation, there's roses. Typical love, romance, passions, um, sensuality. sensuality. Mm -hmm. And in the alcohol temptation, there's buttercups. It was really hard to find flowers that would fit the type of um, vibe we were going for and mm-hmm. what we wanted to express. But Buttercups worked well because it had humility, neatness, childish, and ingratitude, which kind of like mixes with uh, alcoholism and drinking. Yeah. And for the Pride Temptation is plastic flowers. You know, those $2 ones you can buy mm. in any... Two dollar uh, shop. Two dollar shop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, they make, they can mean betrayal, disease, loneliness, and insincerity. And we decided that um, pride kind of feels like that, when especially when you decide to walk in it like Eve had. Mm. So that's the fruit of pride. Yeah. The, the outcome. Yeah. Okay. I'm Good just one. trying to. <laughs> I'm just making sure I'm understanding you well. Yeah. 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 That's um. That's it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So. Okay, what's next slide? Our target audience. Target audience? Probably me. (laughs) Probably aiming it at me. (laughs) Actually, um... You can say no. (laughs) Our film is... We were aiming for an implicit Christian journey Mm. for the purpose of spreading our audience. Yes. So we didn't want to, like, make it that it's so openly christian that people who aren't christian would be turned off by watching it sure Mm. and um even though that's not wrong like we could still make it work but we just thought for this project specifically yeah that would be cool um to do it in a way that if we could like leave easter eggs for people yes so there's like certain things like the the um wool yeah like it's a verse which everyone who's like christian knows the verse right yeah but, um, and so people, there's triggers. There's triggers throughout that sort yeah. of turn people on to ideas. Yeah. So yeah. if they saw if they saw that and someone was like, "Oh, that reminds me of um, he knitted me in my mother's womb," yes. and then they'll be like, "Oh, what's that?" Yeah. And then they'll be like, "That's in the Bible, don't you know?" Yeah. yeah. Cool. I love it. Yeah. That's so great. We, we wanted stuff like that, and we wanted like people that are our age and older, so like yeah. like late teen yeah. kind of age, because um, obviously we're better at connecting with those kind yeah of. and there's not a lot of content like christian content for people our age for 
us younger people like there's a there's a lot of really mature stuff for the like the adults and the old people and really childish stuff for the really little kids Hmm. but nothing really for us and that's kind of like our aim with this project yeah i agree with you so actually it's a real unsourced um for lack of a better word market Mm -hmm. so um if anyone watches this and you're like a millionaire, like a, <laughs> a, a believer, if you're a believer and a millionaire and you want to invest in some young women of integrity who have great ideas and an excellent platform and a uh, way to use media to get the gospel across to this generation, get in touch with us and fund these wonderful girls. I just had to do that. Yeah. <laughs> God willing. Bezat Hashem, B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach. So, the purpose of our film is to express our n- need as humans for God and His mercy yep. for us and His forgiveness. There's a lot of things we want to express, but those are kind of the, the main things. Um, it, it wants, we want to show how what we do in real life, like real life, what we do in life affects our spiritual life mm. and our connection with God yeah because obviously our spiritual and physical uh, like one like your soul yeah. like yeah yeah, yeah. and <laughs> live yeah and um, we wanted to show that it's easy to like sway if you're um, if you're like putting off God's word or if you're um, what do you call it? Ignoring your Christian friends or like stopping going to church and stuff because then you have no reason to hold yourself accountable, that kind of thing. Because no one around you is, will be, you know, telling you that you're doing wrong and that you have to listen to the Holy Spirit, not just your own thoughts. Hmm. And um, yeah, we want to show that. And then we also wanted to show that he waits he waits for us to choose him until our last breath so we have right until we die to um choose to fall into god's hands oh man because yeah and he never like leaves us even though we we go into the pride temptation Mm. he's always holding on to our our thread Mm, thank god yes thank god (laughs) and the reason we called it hadetic or the way is because it follows somebody's life and it's also what christians were originally called uh they were called hadetic the way Mm. um you know the people who followed jesus who was also called the way and the life Mm. well the truth yeah and if you're wondering whereabouts that's written in the bible the book of acts the acts of the um the the sent ones the apostles the book of acts 19 9 22 4 and 24 22 specifically refer to early jewish followers of yeshua being called haderich so a noun to describe their sect of belief thanks for that (laughs) (laughs) here's our context and verses and stuff just so you know we're not uh pulling this out of nowhere awesome yeah, surely there's more but we didn't scope the whole bible <laughs> yeah like, we haven't read the whole bible so we're getting there yeah um so there's the first one uh when the wall comes down and builds eve in the spiritual world uh it's a you knitted me in my mother's womb psalm 139 13 yeah you have cr- created my conscience you knit me together in my mother's womb yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah. And then... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think... So when... I remember coming up with the idea, because we were thinking... We had the spiritual world, and then we had the physical world. But we, like, you know... In the process of making ideas, you don't really have any ideas. You just have, like, jumbled words. Yeah. But the... I remember that verse specifically, because I think it's cool. And anyway, that's how it made that's how, yeah, that, that's how <laughs> that's this how that whole hardetic started <laughs> yeah we're like oh did you hear that verse and then we're like oh we should put that in our movie yeah, yeah and then it just built itself from there <laughs> right um uh, yeah what, what's that verse and it's like 
um, God establishes the plans or something. Something like that. You know that one? Like, yeah. If you listen to our podcast, man, that's all you're going to hear. <laughs> man makes his plans, but God determines his footsteps. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the next one is Psalms 27.10. Though my father and mother forsake me, Adonai will take me in. So when Eve's wool, when she goes into the pride uh, temptation, gets stuck on a branch on the main path, we wanted that to be the expression that God is never forsaking us. Mm. That he's always giving us a way back to him. Yeah, because everyone has a chance equally. Yeah. yeah, I think that's an, I think that's a very important um, concept to express because there are people our age these days that feel lost and alone and they just haven't had the joy of uh, like listening to the holy spirit yet mm. amen i pray for those people Gamma ne. um our next one uh in in simple um terms uh jesus is uh kind of rebuking his disciples for trying to tell the children to go away from him but he tells them, you know, whoever is like these um, will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And when Eve, when she finally decides to jump into the chasm, she turns back into her child form. And we wanted to represent that she, because she had decided to have faith in God, she had returned to her childlike faith. Yeah, that's a good one. That's great. <laughs> 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 also, um, yeah, so the hedge represents our path to God's kingdom, and Eve uh, getting caught in the end represents our failure to reach God and God's mercy to grab us. So, because um, John 14 6 says. Um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. And like, so you have to go to Him first. Yeah. yeah. And because um, Jesus and God are like the same. Yeah, because they're one. Echad. Echad. Yeah. So you're saying the essential concept there is you're saying it's impossible for us to reach God, that He's the one who has to reach us. Yes. And we're the ones who respond to that. Yeah. We can't. So you said we she realized or she got trapped and couldn't reach god and therefore she, he came yeah awesome which is the gospel yeah, yeah. that's what we, that's <laughs> yeah. our job right <laughs> yeah. amen um yeah that's pretty much it. these are oh these are these, these are awesome <laughs> sharks yeah. so, so these are our concept our concept <laughs> arts that we put together um the one on the top in the hedge <laughs> uh, it's uh, the entrance to the sex temptation, uh, how she, how it opens on the side of the main path and kind of has this glow about it that kind of brings you in. It's trying to grab Entice you. you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the one just underneath it is the hands like of God, of Jesus coming out of this void to grab uh, Eve since she has jumped with faith to him yeah, yeah that's her child form yeah and um the one on the right i'm assuming is wool um coming to make a foot on the grass so that's the um the knitting like it's together. making yeah, yeah it's knitting um eve yeah so those are those are just um we drew those to show some main points of our film just whipped them up yeah just whipped them up just, yeah <laughs> just like just like this and awesome. then they were there boom wow <laughs> why 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 it took us some time obviously yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um we wanted to show everyone what it might look like mm. um these aren't uh, yeah these aren't final so these are just like what you would it's kind of like a poster to a movie so this is just practice <laughs> yeah because if you draw that good when you're practicing uh, i don't know if i can cope with the end product well 
we we hope it's um, appealing to everyone. Mm. It is cool. just us two working on it, mm. so it's gonna take another year, yeah, um, at least at least to f- hopefully finish it off. Yeah. But you have a pretty clear plan as to yeah. working that out. Yeah, here it is. Great. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're cur- we've currently started the animation yep. part of it. So we just spent a year or so. It's like Half a year? eight months uh, on pre-production. So that's like building all the characters and story and planning it out, uh, talking about where they're gonna go background ideas, background concepts, character, background, (laughs) how they all know each other, uh, the verses, implementing, all that planning and stuff. Um, But now we're finally onto production, actually animating it, and we hope to finish by the end of next year, uh, end of 2021. Um, And we would like to put it into a film festival, but otherwise we'd hope to spread it on things such as YouTube or other video platforms. Yep, hopefully everyone at church will watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Take it to other churches. Yep, yeah, we definitely will do all that we can to promote it, for sure. Yeah. Um, and after this project, we're, we've got a lot of ideas for what we want to make in the future um, as a studio. Uh, one of them is this Bible series. It will take key points within the Bible and be kind of like an animated series for teens so that they can watch stories of the Bible in a more entertaining way, a way that's not for children yeah, and not really boring either. Mm. Yeah. So we plan to have all the gory stuff as well. Yeah, but not... not <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it'll be for teens. Um, and hopefully some other short films uh, we hope to make as well Um, yeah if we make the um, bible series we plan to call it Hadavar Hadavar which means the word (laughs) which is what it is the word, the essence, the substance of the universe Yeah. so like similar to um, Prince of Egypt which is like the story of Moses mm. and stuff. We want to make our own interpretation of that story and then like David and Goliath. And but yours so will be biblically so accurate. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> we'll be taking from the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Um, but further on in the future, um, I would like to open my own studio that produces uh, animated series and shows for teens as well. Uh, Christian and non-christian one but of course it's coming from a christian perspective so Mm. it's all gonna end up following that line anyway it'll be christian morally yeah Mm. awesome yeah uh, also in the future after uh we do our our lift of stuff i want to open a cafe that promotes god as well so i want to like sounds weird but like have a cafe that has i was thinking a thing where you get like a free coffee if you recite the verse of the day or something nice i like it yeah because it helps you remember the word and then you get you a get coffee. a free coffee like i would do that if someone did <laughs> yeah. that <laughs> but um yeah that and uh, either way this is just what we think we want to do but god will direct us oh, man. Yeah, and we will accept it because we love to follow what he wants yeah. us to do and those verses at the bottom it kind of is the essence of what we're doing here um proverbs 16 3 and 9, 3 to 9 commit to the lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans in their hearts humans plan their course but the lord establishes this establishes their steps so that's what kenzie was trying to figure out before mm-hmm. yeah um and um colossians three twenty three. whatever you do work heartily as for the lord and not for men that is our goal so we, we don't uh, specifically oh uh, we don't really care um, whether it does well or not yeah if it's popular or not we're just doing it because we think that's what God wants us to do and whatever comes out of it is to a step like is for his plan which we're happy with yeah awesome yeah 
and then great so um what i what i love about all this is um the specific art form aside and uh you guys will just have to bear with us it's raining really hard on our roof so if it's a little harder to hear us we'll try and speak up a little bit it's pretty stormy here in auckland aotearoa today but what i love about what you girls are doing the media or the art form aside is that you're saying i've been given certain talents by god or i've chosen to pursue certain avenues of talent and invest my time in it and become better at it but you've actually said i'm going to give my talent to god so that he will use it to promote his kingdom rather than saying i want to promote myself I want to further myself um, and we know that the scripture says selfish ambition leads to demise but you guys have chosen to allow God to work in you to really to share the gospel in a really uh, relevant contemporary way for your generation and I think that's a great message to our entire community um, all of us have gifts some of us may think we we're not the greatest artists or we're not good at music or we're not good at those things that the world thinks is popular but we all have gifts and those gifts can either be used for our own selfish ambition or they can be given to God as an offering a living sacrifice and that's what really excites me about what you girls are doing and I think you articulate it very well you know your concepts are well thought through um, they're very sound, biblically speaking, but also the creative way you've approached developing those concepts is just incredible. I, I'm moved just listening to the story without even watching it. It's a couple of times tonight as you were describing the story. I actually am coming on with tears because I really sense the essence of the gospel in it. And I think I said to you guys before, you know, I grew up with the likes of C.S. Lewis. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I really feel that um, the way you're using your medium is very similar to the way he used his. And I think it's a very powerful tool. Thank you. That's very great to hear. Because, <laughs> I mean, we're not struggling or anything with what we think is going to be the turnout of our sure. thing. But, you know, when things get hard, it's kind of, um, intuitive to start thinking is it worth it kind of stuff yeah yeah even though we do know we, we've prayed a couple of times together like to ask God if if this is what we if he wants us to do this if mm. we if we're just trying to be popular yeah. or something because I agree that our idea is very sound and very good in our in my opinion mm. but I don't want to just do something if it's not for God good and um, also I think God does want us to do this because yeah. every I I agree with um, our platform does not go into the Christian side of stuff very well at least yeah. Yeah. and media before I was Christian I've seen like Christian films and stuff and they were pretty boring in my opinion but like yeah. I, I didn't understand the concepts either back then yeah. even as a Christian who does understand the concepts Christian yeah. films are a bit B grade yeah and I I'm studying on Christian films for as a part of my research paper this year and just learning about how a lot of Christian films nowadays tend to fall short of of a lot of things mm. not only in their biblical message but in their entertainment value mm. and we want to this research it's also helping our project mm. helping us understand how we should move forward and great yeah because we, we want we want to show people that you can um, well produce something and stick to scriptures. Love yeah. it. I love that. That's a great goal. Let's take a look at the, the animations that we've got here. Um, and they'll start playing in a moment here. Um, and basically this is an introduction to these two short animations that the girls have, have done one each just as part of the prep for the project. And what I'm gonna do is, as they play, I'm just gonna get the girls, uh, respectively, to just explain to us something about what we're seeing. So, um, 
first of all, I think this is Kenzie's one that we're seeing at the moment. Yeah. So that's Eve's mum. That's Eve. There's a parent's that's spiritual Eve. And then, sorry, we'll, <laughs> we'll come back to yours. So this is Lilia's one, and it's going to run for a bit. Yeah, sorry. so she, this one, she's running away from the ominous thing that's chasing her. Yeah. And this is just before she trips, and it shows the... It shows the tripping as yeah. well. Okay, yeah. and so now here's Kenzie's one. And yep, that's can, the world making yeah. the baby in um, the spiritual world, and then she gets handed to her mum after she's born. And then this will be where she says, I'm here for you. And it echoes in that part. And so um, we just wanted to obviously show that she's knitted. And then we wanted to show that it's in the physical world that she's born at the same time. Yes. And then... um, I think it shows that very effectively. That's Uh, great. Yeah. I don't... Well, I mean, I get that from it without you even explaining, explaining it to me, which tells me you've used your medium very well. And, and I love the I love the close up on the foot when your character trips as well. Yeah, mm. that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. What yeah. the heck? <laughs> I just added that at the end because I wanted to feel like I've, <laughs> I was just going to be so I can tell people later on I helped them. I put, <laughs> I did something. Yeah. But yeah so those, <laughs> those are just some of the animations that we've just started. Yeah. Um, and. They, they will go towards the final project. Those are just roughs. That's why they're so yes. sketchy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think people understand that, but even looking at them in that form, I, I, I mean, I'm engaged as soon as I see it, um, even in the rough form. And I guess you guys will, will keep rough ideas kind of for the, the, the iTunes extras. You know, they have the extras at the bottom when you watch the movie. The extras, oh, yeah, bloopers. bloopers and all that. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of iTunes those. extras, and you have all that stuff. We plan to at the at the end of the movie have bloopers of us um, oh, cool. conversing about the great. I yeah, love that. Or like kids, the kids when they're young running around the yeah uh, credits, which is just two people. Cool, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> so um, uh, we've got a few. I just want to let you guys some of the know some of the encouraging things that people are saying here as they're watching you. Um, so Henira says how beautiful your project is and you two young women um auntie shannon says actually she writes quite a long one here <laughs> love, love what you two are doing it's truly spectacular i'm so blown away and totally excited amazing <laughs> and then leanne leanne white she says you girls are just amazing i'm blown away by your creativity and the way you follow yeshua what a gift you both are to the church, the body of believers. So that's really, really neat encouragement. And Glenn Hutana wants to know if you have a website. Um, I don't think you have a website, but you have a Facebook page. Yes, we have a Facebook pa- Oh, we have Instagram and Facebook. And you also have YouTube because that's where I've listened to your podcast. Yes. Oh, we do have YouTube. And how would people contact you, Kenzie? Will there be... Will there be an email coming across the bottom of the screen now with yep, your contact information? <laughs> there it is. Just keep it there, keep it there, keep it there. So as you can see with our superb graphics, we have, <laughs> we have worked it so that the email uh, comes into the screen and the background darkens out. That's a uh, video effect that we've worked on. And that's the email if you'd like to contact uh, Alef Tav and dialogue with them about this uh, film, this short film. And we certainly will be continuing to promote it uh, on our Beth Malek uh, Facebook page. And also I will be actively promoting it on my page. So any of you who are part of our community, please link to the promotion, share it, help us, help us get some free advertising once the project's <laughs> up and running. Thank you. That's fantastic, Kenzie. I think they've had long enough. Okay, just so you know, it says A A L T two four zero nine at gmail dot com. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, so I'm just going to check through and see if there's any other questions. I think um, 
I think most of them actually here are encouragements rather than questions. But I do have just a couple of questions before we finish tonight, girls. Wait, I have something to say as well. Oh, okay, Yala, then you say that and then I'll ask the questions. Okay, so I just wanted to acknowledge our community because we've gotten a lot of support and um, family vibes, if you get what I'm saying. So, like, even though um, it's not, like, oh, you're doing well kind of support. It's just like being, t uh, dwelling together as as one. Good. Yeah. So uh, um, we wouldn't have as much confidence if we didn't come from a church community like ours and with like such an okay guy teaching us stuff. Like, you know. Wow. We didn't <laughs> don't, don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> no, like um, we, we trust that our community does support us and it gives us encouragement Great. to want to make this film. So, so the you. community she's talking about is Beit Melech Kehila, that's Beth Melech community of Messiah following Jewish people and also uh, Christians who, who meet with us. So we uh, worship together Yachad, as, as one people who share in common our belief in the King Messiah, Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel. So thank you, uh, Kenzie, for Oh, yeah, he's the that. okay guy that I was talking about that yeah, well, teaches us stuff. It could have been a lot worse. You know? <laughs> uh, okay. Very good pastor. Just okay, Zebeseda. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so I, do, I do have a couple of questions because as I listen to you talk, there's a couple of things that interested me. Sorry. Okay, one is, so, so your main character is named Eve. So in Hebrew, we say Chaya. Chaya is the first woman that... Of creation, right? Yeah. And Chaya means life, because life comes from her her womb. So why did you pick that name? Because of that. Is it because of that? Yeah. yeah. We so, researched all our names in the movie. Yeah, okay. all the names are biblical names, and they have a link to their actions. Yeah. And yeah. their personalities. Yeah. The reason I ask that is because uh, I hope people have listened and understand the depth of your narrative. You have a great main narrative or meta narrative, but then you've got so many depths to that narrative with within what you're doing, and even the meanings of the names add a new uh, depth to it and a new paradigm, so that they actually they actually fit so well to the meta narrative while giving a completely uh, unique sort of divergent path if you like mm. um which takes my mi mind down a hole there's just not that in my experience that kind of writing with regard to modern media is just sorely lacking like i really think you guys have got a gift and i think you've done a fantastic job of teasing out the finer details so that i mean i love it as art it's it's really well done yeah well um Majority of it is um, Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit inspires you, yeah. and the two of you working together has helped produce some of these things too, I'm guessing. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we're very yin and yang in some stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like or, or are you just a yin yang? <laughs> no, no, no. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like. oh you, can, you can hear the silence. <laughs> Even online, that was a dad joke. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we feel quite blessed having each other to work with because our personalities Good. make up for each other. Yeah. There's a lot of places where I lack and Kenzie makes up for and vice versa. Right. Yeah. yeah. Rather than say yin and yang, because that's a dualistic idea, let's, let's, let's say that you're both two different colours who, when mixed together, make a beautiful new colour. Yeah, we balance each other out. <laughs> You're awesome. You You're the straight man. <laughs> okay. I'm the okay guy. Okay. <laughs> okay. What do you mean? So the other thing I was going to ask you is, is, and we'll finish with this, is a more general question. And, and that is, I know that you're being inspired by God um, to write this stuff. I know that you have each other. But there's also something about it that's really coming from, from you guys. Yes. So have you relied heavily on your own life experience to to bring this story to life? That's what I'm wanting to know. Yeah, actually, the reason we chose the Pride 
as the final temptation yeah. is because we've both been stuck in it before. Okay. We um, felt very familiar with the idea of what Eve goes through. Okay. Yeah. Just it when we were discussing over what what kind of issues she'd get stuck with because you know when you go through the process you get to that point and pride was just something we kind of understood mm. something that similar to Eve kept drawing us back in mm. with, with its plasticiness yeah. and brightness and it's just that I think it's one we also thought like it's one that's not really talked about that often yes. like people might talk about the sex temptation or the alcohol temptation yeah. or drugs or whatever but they don't often tackle this idea of pride and it's such a big thing in a lot of people's lives you know, in a lot of ways, pride is the soil for the sex and the drug temptation because pride is linked to idolatry, yeah. and idolatry is the root, the root of all sin. Yeah. It was satanic pride that resisted God and caused all this trouble in the first place. So I like that you guys, it's a tendency of youth to focus on the, the outcomes or the symptoms, if you like, but you guys have actually beelined straight to the source of all the other problems yeah. that's that's exceptional but like, I just think that's great yeah well we thought because um, we've put a lot of effort and thought and feeling into this film yeah it, it's um, it's best if you have kind of like an experience yes. or background to the idea and we couldn't really talk about like sex temptation or anything because we've never been in a situation Thank like God. that Yes, thank, thank, thank God. <laughs> but pride, uh, we've dealt with that in our separate life circumstances yeah. and stuff like that. And um, we, as people who recently became Christian, you know, just in, within the few years, the idea of turning to God and away from your pride was something very fresh, fresh yes. to us. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, um, young woman. I keep calling you girls, you girls to me, but yeah. young women, thank you for taking the time um, to share your project with us. Um, obviously, our own community here watching all have glowing things to say about you. <laughs> I've just read you some of the comments. You can you can read the rest of them on the feed later on. And I just want to say to those watching from uh, the Beit Malik Kehila from our own community. Uh, you know you're going to be able to ask these young ladies questions in person next time we meet together physically and if the lockdown does come to an end in the week ahead of us we would like to try and do that uh, next uh, Friday uh, for our evening service but if the lockdown continues we will be here live streaming again next week same time same place and we'll continue our study of the gospel according to John chapter 16 and verses 16 through to 33 so the latter half of that chapter we did the first half last week on our live stream so this is us saying Shabbat Shalom yes oh we've got something else from <laughs> Aliyah Yala come on um, I just like to say thanks for listening okay and also me and Lilia are open to commissions <laughs> for um, <laughs> drawings. So if you need something illustrated, as you've seen, hold up. We do stuff like this. <laughs> and this is our style. It's about the case. <laughs> but we also have other... Um, we, we're adaptable and flexible. But we have... We're trying to raise money to afford a comic convention that we'd like to go to to um, raise even further money for our uh, studio in the future after we finish the um, the, produc the pr production of Haderic and we'd also like to pay to advertise it but anyways great that's the end <laughs> fantastic so that was a note from our sponsor <laughs> um. I'm the business side of our duo <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it is Shabbat, so stop lurking and, uh, and have a good rest. And we'll look forward to seeing our own community if the lockdown finishes in person this coming Friday. And if not, we'll see you again 
here on our Facebook page for the live stream. And we also want to say Shabbat Shalom uh, Lecholam to all those watching from other locations throughout the world. Um, many of you will watch the replay of this live stream. We want to wish you a Messiah filled Shabbat of peace from the Beit Melech Kehila here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So Shabbat Shalom and Laila Tov.